really want to see is a launch at the end of the day, don't you? So, let's try it. Four wheel drive launch. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see, I have a Focus ST behind me. Looks very standard, doesn't it? But as you can see from the title of this video, this is far from standard. This is an all wheel drive, four wheel drive converted Focus ST. And I really want to start the video by explaining one, what's going on at the back of this thing. So I think there's a lot of people out there that may be interested to know how this was created, why the owner did it, how he did it, and also go through the aspects of even doing this to a Focus. It's something that I've had a lot on the channel where a big powered ST, RS, anything like that has come to the channel. And a lot of comments have been about four wheel driving. Why isn't this four wheel drive, blah, blah. Well, today I actually have one in front of me. So I'm gonna go through it. I want to explain what this car has underneath it, go and drive it, go and experience it for you guys and understand why and how this car was made. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I'm gonna have to explain to you guys exactly what's going on under here. I have a little script of modifications that have been done to the rear end of this car as you can see there is a lot going on I've tried my best to get under this thing but i have no means of really showing you guys apart from pictures what's actually going on under here but as you can just about see in this video you can see drive shafts you can see the rear axle and everything so this is a it has the m66 s60r volvo gearbox in it sort of same thing as the focus it would come out of the factory with, but it has a transfer box from a v50 it has a prop shaft from a cougar it has the cougar diesel dip in this one v50 rear and front drive shafts and it has the rear subframe from the v50 which all sort of plugged and played into this car a lot of people as i was talking to the owner did say that it wasn't possible to do this and the owner actually found that most of the mounting bits was actually incredibly attainable to actually just bolt into the car because these are from sort of the same production line the whole sort of met up which was pretty cool it also has a v50 fuel tank to go with the four-wheel drive system now obviously taking a car from front wheel drive to four-wheel drive is a really big feat it's, it's it's a crazy thing to do especially on your driveway as the owner did as well as putting the prop shafts and everything in the engine had to be raised 10 millimeters to get it in line with the whole car again a lot of work but incredibly achievable considering this was all done on a driveway from parts sourced and just general knowledge about the car looking online making sure he's getting the right parts that fit rightly to the car and playing with it just taking stuff apart making sure it goes back together right make sure it's all in line and everything but just doing the research that's how this thing was created now at this sort of power 320 brake horsepower it is at a good cap you could go to around 400 i think with all of the bearings prop shaft drive shafts all that and it would still run pretty fine. I think any more than that, you would really have to go into putting diffs in this thing and stronger parts just to make sure it's able to run that power completely through the car. But the split in this is 60 front, 40 rear. Now you could change that power output. So you could get a box that would do 50-50 or vice versa. You could shove it all to the back, shove it all to the front. Currently at its stage at the moment, it is running 60% to the front, 40% to the rear. in and driving the all-wheel drive ST now let's get into it how does this car feel yes we've driven a fair few 320 brake horsepower focuses on the channel and you know here or there they're the same sort of setup but this one is completely next level so I've picked a road it's got a lot of corners a lot of camber and a lot of places where a usual ST would find it hard to put its power down so we're gonna get into it we're gonna jump into some corners and the first thing I can really feel is traction from the back end it's not um wallowy it's not trying to overtake itself not that the standard ones do but you feel so much more grip from the rear end we tip it in 
feels like so much more is going on in this car and I think that's where, or this is where, it's really going to show its true colours is down a back road because you can chuck this thing and it has so much more stability, so much more grip. I do feel that this is something that a lot of people want to do and the sensation I'm getting just from the rear end, just from the rear end, yes I know the power is split 60-40 but that 40% of the back, you can really really feel it. But walking around the rest of the car you wouldn't really know this thing is all wheel drive, four wheel drive from just looking at it, it looks incredibly standard, even standard tips at the back, standard wheels with these girthy Nankang NS2R tyres which have a beautiful bit of tread pattern on them, I mean look at that, fresh for this shoot, but again looking around this car would you have any idea of what was lurking underneath you would have absolutely no idea even interior completely standard until we actually come around the back and look under here and notice that fuel pump tank drive shafts everything you would not know this thing has all of this potential underneath just by looking at it because it looks incredibly standard just like a sleeper in my opinion a four-wheel drive 320 brake horsepower focus sleeper this is in my books because you look straight under there and see all of the goodness yeah proper proper cool build got a lot of love for this thing so what you guys really want to see is a launch at the end of the day don't you so let's try it four-wheel drive launch whatsoever that is something I've never felt before in this shape focus complete stability and the back squats and you wouldn't have got it in the video but it squats and goes like there's no let up and you get let up sometimes from the focus chassis I suppose because it being front wheel drive it is trailing its rear end behind even at you know 50 mile an hour you put your foot down and the car is just so composed and it just directly does what you ask it to. No hard to put across in a video because what I'm, what I'm feeling, what I'm, what I'm experiencing in this car is complete. <laughs> complete traction, complete stability. It feels like it should have left the factory like this. This setup with the Cougar rear subframe and the V50 parts, you know, the V50 parts that have been sourced from America because there's a lot of V50s there and other parts being, you know, brought off eBay to make sure they fit and off braking cars and stuff. This car was built on a driveway by a lad that just thought it was a really good idea to just think about it and study parts, study the subframe, study the chassis, the way the bolts are in the car and stuff and just... The power is so different to any ST I've ever driven. It feels so much more nimble, so much more poised. The back end is squat, go. The launch, as you've seen, is very undramatic. It goes, it just, it just happens. And the craziness, the front wheel drive power that I've driven before in these, this shape focus, you know, anything from 250 all the way up to you know rs's with 700 brake horsepower none of them felt like this this isn't a boost by gear car this isn't a front wheel drive quaif diff short shifter rs it's nothing like that it's it's a car of its own and it's really really hard to put that across in the video because unless you chuck this around the corner or launch it you will not understand how it feels to drive you will not get that that rear end is so happy to be propelling you down the road around the corner with all of the stability that the front end has and you get that from you know driving a standard one the chassis are fantastic in these cars but the four-wheel drive system when you throw it in in such a small car like this it just becomes phenomenal the drive is phenomenal the power delivery is so so on it there's no let up there's no tire squeal there's no chirping whatsoever it doesn't sit and roll a fat burnout, it just does what it says on the tin and that is just mind blowing to me. This car is just so, so well 
put together for someone that's built it on their driveway as well. No shops or anything. This was built on a driveway by a guy that just sat down and thought about it. Went through the motions and worked out what parts worked. And I have all of the love in the world for Sam for doing this. I really do. I think me really touching on the four wheel drive system is one of those things. And you can go and actually see the build of this car on Sam's channel. I'll link it in the description below. So please, if there's anything I've missed, head over to his channel and have a look through the video because he actually has a tutorial of how this happened. And from the driver's seat, driving so many cars, this is so good. I can't put across in the video how much that rear end, you know, the four wheel drive, the, the prop shaft and everything, it just changes the way this car delivers its power, produces cornering ability. So poised. I mean, second gear, 35 mile an hour. Just, I've never felt that in a focus before, never. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If there's any more you want to see about this car, please head over to Sam's channel. I've linked it in the description below. Please go and check it out. Absolutely awesome guy for bringing his car down today. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out fydapparel.com. Cop yourself some FYD merch to support the channel. I'm gonna go and drive this car back. The four wheel drive monster that it is. And I'll see you all on the next video.